actually there's a psychological paradox in the fact that few people are interested in wave energy. The reason for that is that there is way too much success of offshore wind, onshore wind, and solar. And it's, it's a known psychological paradox, and it's called uh, the blindness by success. When you have a working solution that works just fine, you completely forget and prevent yourself from looking at other alternatives. Although we know that we will need those alternatives in the future, we know that wind and solar will not be enough uh, to meet our CO2 uh, reduction targets. So we know we need other types of renewables, yet we struggle to find the right alternatives simply because we are blocked. And what I hear a lot at conferences, and, and mostly coming from utilities actually, uh, those big wind turbine superheroes is wave energy while well, we're not interested. And that reminds me of a sentence by Bill Gates in 1993, the internet, we're not interested. That kind of resonates the same way. The visionary people, sometimes they tend to miss the new trends because they are blocked in a mindset that has been successful for years. And actually, it's, it's not just recent, this type of thinking. It, it goes way back in time. There's another nice sentence by Thomas Edison, fooling around with AC current, it's just a waste of time, no one will ever use it. Uh, it's 130 years old and that still is valid and that mostly explains why people are not looking seriously at wave energy. And what I would like to present is new ways to get this to work. And actually, I cannot blame people for not going into wave energy because there has been a number of recurrent failures with wave energy devices. Uh, actually, we know what we're talking about because what you see on the right is a test done by SBM in 2006 on a wave energy device. We wanted to develop, and I see Guillaume Mardoise, or I used to see him there, and he was part of this test actually, so you may ask him how it went. Uh, we tested that in the basin, and we came up to the conclusion that, yeah, despite anything we can do, despite our great offshore expertise, despite the fact that we know how to build steel structures very cheap, there's no way we can make it viable. Because wave energy systems, conventional ones based on steel, are by nature extremely bulky structures. They all end up, more or less all end up in a thousand tons per megawatt type of range with a capacity factor that is extremely low. And they require a lot of maintenance. And usually they are extremely noisy as well. So I really can't blame them for not looking at wave energy seriously. But what I would like to do now is explain how we think we are developing a new approach and the right approach for wave energy. And the way we actually did that is by going back to the basics and the fundamentals, what is it we're trying to do here? It's to capture a wave. Okay, and we thought from the very beginning, and actually that's a story I never told, so that's the first, you will see where our S3 system comes from. We started looking in 2009 of, at a, a fundamental question, how nature would design a wave energy converter, not how an oil and gas company would do it, but how nature would do it. So we really went back to the basics, and this is the story of the bio-inspiration of the S3 device, and this is why I think it's a device that makes a lot of sense. We started looking in the nature at places where you can find similar phenomena. And what is wave energy in the end? A wave is a pressure field. So that's a field of pressure that travels across the ocean. And we looked at systems that coexist with such pressure waves. And the one we found is actually the artery system. It's a very efficient body system that is the fruit of millions of years of evolution to carry the blood from the heart to the entire body. And that is done in the most efficient way you can ever think of. 
and that's arteries. Arteries, they always work at resonance on a quite a wide band of beats per minute. Your heart beats per minute are between 30 and 250. And of course, nature makes it such that it is extremely efficient from a, an energy point of view to carry this blood throughout your body. It's the most efficient way we have thought of. And the way it actually happens in the body is a bulge motion. So your arteries, thank you Guillaume, your arteries <laughs> are actually composed of a multi-layer uh, piece of material that has very different characteristics in all the layers. And the way the blood propagates in the system is by changing the diameter of the artery as it flows. And this is the most efficient way of traveling for a pressure wave. So we kind of used this ID to design the S3 system. And the way it looks is about like an artery. So it is a multi-layer assembly of something that looks like a hose. It is round. It, it has a circumferential uh, symmetry. And we fill it with sea water, just like they are filled with blood. And the way the system like that actually works is also with the bulge motion. So this is the basic principle of our wave energy device. This is by nature then the most efficient way of, transfer, of transferring energy from the pressure waves into a deformation of the system. And that's the one leg of this uh, bio-innovation. The great thing about it is that if you tune it properly, just like arteries are tuned, they are always at resonance. And they always resonate. And they are entirely fully flexible, so they have an infinite number of degrees of freedom. And if you know the laws of hydrodynamics, you know that if you have an infinite number of degrees of freedom, you have an infinite capture width. And the second ID, actually, because this is nice, okay, you manage to have a bulging structure, but what do you do with that? How do you actually extract useful electrical energy out of that? Well, the second system we thought of in the nature, the best energy transducer you can think of, is a muscle. And a muscle is extremely efficient, so we tapped into the developments in the 80s for robotics, where the Japanese invented, together with the, with the Americans, uh, artificial muscles that they wanted to put in robots. Those muscles, they are extremely good, well, our natural muscles are extremely good at transforming uh, chemical energy into movement. Those guys, they wanted to transform electrical energy into movement and put that in robots. We use it the other way around. We convert the motion into electrical energy. And the thing is, in terms of material density, both in mass density, so kilograms per cubic meter, and uh, in terms of energy densities, it is the most efficient material we could think of. So on our system, we just wrap the entire rubber hose with electroactive polymers that will follow the deformation of the device, that will follow this bulge motion, and that will convert this bulge motion into electricity. That is done directly thanks to artificial muscles. They are called in the industry electroactive polymers. The nice thing about those polymers is they are, they are built, they are manufactured like plastic packaging materials. You see on the bottom right a typical production line for these materials that is highly automated. It's extremely cheap to produce. And things I didn't mention yet, it's absolutely scalable as a device compared to hydraulic systems where when you make a step in power output, you have to make a step in the design and the way you actually implement that. In this system, it's very easy to scale up. You make the machine longer, you put more electroactive polymers, it generates more energy output. Third aspect of biomimicry uh, that actually we found as a result, we didn't look for this type of motion. Um, but it, it, 
the thing is, it is designed with biomimetic inspirations. So as a result of that, it has a biomimetic response. It is entirely silent because there is no moving mechanical parts, it's all rubber types of materials. And the response of the system is actually very similar to natural Yeah, good. <laughs> Thank you. To natural systems. What you see on the left is a palamis. It's it's a, it's a sea snake that actually travels in the ocean by this uh, articulated motion. What you see on the right is a picture of a wave tongue test 30 for a 35 meter long S3 that we tested last year uh, in Nantes. And uh, this is another picture, an underwater picture of the system when it goes into large waves. And you can see the motion of that is actually very similar to natural motion. And that just makes sense because it's just built with muscles and flexible materials. If I should summarize then what, what was the, the basis of the invention of this device, uh, it is a device that has zero mechanical part. It is a device that by nature is very light. It uses only light and flexible materials. It is 100% silent because it has no moving mechanical parts. It has a broadband response. It is entirely flexible and it's impedance it just is adjusted just like it is done in the arteries. It has a high conversion efficiency. This is really done by working on the power electronics that goes with it. I didn't speak about it, but maybe for a next conference. And it has enhanced survivability because the system is flexible. The main pitfall, I would say, with wave energy is that normally conventional systems are designed for the extreme conditions. Uh, and therefore, they are over-designed. And most of the time, they fail during those storms because they are poorly designed. What we want to do is use the flexibility of the system to adapt the geometry and survive in extreme waves. So when extreme waves come in, we just deflate this tube. It goes flat, and the mooring loads are divided by roughly 100. And this is why we can survive. This is actually inspired by the wind industry, where they have the, the blades that pitch during storms, so they don't have to design for large wind conditions. Uh, if I should tell you what a poor slide. Uh, if I should tell you where we are today, we are been doing this development for the last 10 years now. We have a project with ADEM, Investissement d'Avenir, with our partners, the Concentrate de Nantes and IFP Energy Nouvelle. Um, we are actually building it now. I will show you a few pictures of the production line we have installed in our laboratory in, in, in France. Uh, we will have tests at sea in 2021, so there will be a full-scale demonstrator installed in the water at that time. And I invite all the people here, really, who waited for the beer but came here, uh, to the inauguration of this one. Uh, it will be tested for minimum one year. Uh, and after that, we already have in the plans uh, pre-commercial projects with three to six devices of roughly one megawatt each uh, and that will be hopefully followed by commercial device. What we have in mind long term is utility scale market with large devices over six megawatt per unit in order to get the LCOE down below 50 euros per megawatt hour and well below that. This is a target we have. We stick to, we will stick to this target hopefully, but that's it's, that's our ambition and the way uh, and this is why we continue the development because we think we can get there uh, and just to tell you I told you about uh, things that are being built at the moment in our lab so this is a 3d picture but basically a production line for these electroactive polymers artificial muscles generators that will be installed on the system and that's a picture of how it is today so not quite finished, but uh, we're getting there. The equipment is being installed this month. We should start production uh, by August or September. I think that was that for me. Uh, I think there's a little video when I conclude the speech uh, that describes the, the system and the way it works. I think this video is on YouTube, so you may be able to find it on our website or on YouTube. And I would like to thank you for listening to this speech. I hope you kept an open mind and I didn't scare you too much. This is a long-term development, but 
I truly, personally believe this is the only way to make wave energy viable. Thank you.